Endorphins are neuropeptides from the hypothalamus and pituitary gland. They cross the blood-brain barrier and head into the opioid receptors to block pain and create feelings of euphoria. And if anything I said resonates inside your head, then tune on in to the Endorphin Report. Hello and welcome to the Endorphin Report. I'm Paul and joining me is my brother Dan and Cynthia. Hey. We're going to be Hello. talking about very romantic movies. Yeah. Can you explain, Cynthia, what you mean by endorphins when you, it, what you look for in a movie? Well, sometimes the movie doesn't have to be good, but sometimes it just hits that moment where they do a little stare at each other and you just feel a little bit of happy endorphins, which I call personally endorphin sprinkles, which we will mm. be doing the endorphin report on later. Yeah, we'll finish up with the endorphin report, start off with a plot summary, and get into some segments like, what happens the day after, and are they going to make it as a couple? You're saying that the endorphins aren't necessarily tied to how good the movie is. Not at all. It seems like sometimes you deliberately don't want a good movie. If this movie was like really good, then you know I'd have to maybe think about it and think about what it's trying to say. But maybe sometimes you just want a dumb movie. Well, let's say some movies are good. Some movies are bad and happen to also have some endorphin moments. And there's that rare films that happen to be funny and have endorphins, which are pretty good to find, but rare, which is why you have to sometimes settle for the crappier with endorphins. But I think I'm going to do this as a disclaimer. I actually thought Set It Up was kind of a delightful film. So if somebody wants to watch a little nice, calm rom-com, I'd recommend to watch it first and then listen to us after. Because it's, it's a nice little thing. It's a nice movie. Yeah, I liked it a lot, too. This is not a movie review podcast. I mean, it's really about what kind of endorphin content there is in it. And I would say it had mm. plenty of that. It was in the shape of a fluffy romantic comedy from the 90s, but just a bit smarter and a bit cooler. Yeah, dialogue is key. It had some good dialogue and some good lines, and that, I realize, is key. When you're putting a bunch of, like, really silly storyline going on, if you have some good, funny dialogue between people, it just makes it all better. Like, it's a ridiculous storyline, but it's not that easy to come up with these kind of ridiculous storylines, I bet. Like, the author of it was a personal assistant herself. Uh, the movie, by the way, has set it up on Netflix. Right. Well, let's get into the plot. So it starts out where we used to, they just show a bunch of, like, assistants to, in New York going to work and, like, getting all these kind of demands and stuff. And then you're introduced to... Harper, who's a girl, and then Charlie, who's the other main protagonist, and they're both working late with their bosses who are kind of at working late in a big New York building and, you know, making a lot of demands, and their bosses are Tay Diggs. I'm just going to call him Tay Diggs the whole time. And Lucy Liu. Yeah, and Lucy Liu. And so it's basically Tay Diggs is like a financial shark tank-like guy who's just like, I'm finance and wearing big suits and like a lot of money. <laughs> and then Lucy Liu is like a famous sportscaster who's like, able to have her own assistant and run an office and act like a hotshot. Wait, just to clarify, we're going with the character names for the assistants, but the actor names for the bosses. Uh, so the, bosses the bosses? They're just Lucy Liu and Tay Diggs. That's all I saw is Lucy Liu and Tay Diggs. All right. So this is kind of like a Devil Wears Prada kind of, my boss is so horrible. Yeah. Because they're extremely high achieving. Yes. And then there's Harper who's the girl who's got kind of like, they make her a little mousy in the beginning, and then Charlie, who just looks like a dude who wishes he was a finance dude. They're both basically uh, kind of like their boss is like being not nasty and like demanding dinner. So then she's running down to try to pay a delivery guy but doesn't have the cash, and Charlie wants the food for his own boss. So then they have a little exchange where like he takes it from her, and then they kind of like argue about it. So that's kind of their mute cute, is like mm. them trying to barter with like the delivery guy to get stuff for their boss. 100% of their consciousness is about their boss and trying not to get fired for having dinner late. But there's probably a little spark there. This person yeah. is cute. He's in a relationship. She's not. But neither of them are particularly looking for a new partner at that point. Yeah. So they're just totally overworked. He's got a model girlfriend who he's got a little time for. And he basically wishes to be promoted and rich. Whereas she has no time to date. She wants to be a writer. And she spends a lot of time in her apartment while her roommate basically gets engaged and seems happy flopping around. Oh, Charlie also has a roommate, Pete Davidson, from SNL. And they have entertaining banter throughout this as well. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. So basically, Tay Diggs has a lot of tantrums about his ex-wife and other stuff, and Lucy Lou gets really demanding and cranky all the time. So then these two people keep getting like, we need to be able to have lives. Harper sees Charlie, and they chat and joke for a bit, and they joke that their bosses like need to get laid to be happier. And then the next day, she's like, wait a sec. We know everything about them. We can do this. She's like, we can Cyrano them, which is basically a saying, I think, when like a nerdy assistant helps a hot boss get somebody or something like that. Oh, it's Cyrano de Bergerac. It's when the dumb, handsome guy gets the weird looking intellectual guy to write poetry for him and yeah, give him advice and tell stuff. him what to yeah. say. But yeah, that's one of many references. They reference the parent trap as well. It's very rom-com aware, this movie. Yeah, so she's like, no, no, we have to do this. Charlie's like, no, that sounds kind of dumb. But then his model girlfriend tries to dump him, and he's like, no, and he gets really pathetic. And he's like, no, no, don't dump me. Like, I'll have more time. Don't worry, it'll be fine. So then he agrees to do it. They figure if the gosses get together, they'll be too busy having sex to make demands, and they'll be happy. So of the four people, only Charlie actually has a current relationship. Yes. And she makes a, Harper makes a thing of being like, oh, I've never had a boyfriend, which I don't think was necessary. Like, she's pretty attractive. You should get out a boyfriend. But she's like, oh, I'm not getting any. And She's too much of a nerd. How can a nerd like that get a boy? She's got her hair in a messy bun. I know. Oh, no, it's a messy bun. You can't date her. So, yeah. So then they agree to get their bosses together and they decide to do an elevator meet cute where they're going to be locked in an elevator together. And they know that because they know the building supervisor, who they call Creepy Tim, who agrees to do it. And he, he's a guy who's a creepy guy in the basement who likes to watch his succulent plants slowly die. <laughs> so he's he's a great character. So they're, they're going to plan to get them locked in an elevator. By the way, my brother just called me today and was locked in an elevator. And he was Damn. waiting for the fire department to get him out. So app timing. Hmm. Did he meet some attractive person on the elevator He was as locked well? in with my mom. And he was locked in while he was trying to go to the airport and make a flight. So he was locked in with his luggage. So. Oh boy. Not great not, time. Not a great situation. Not though. a great situation. But the fire department made, took him out within 10 minutes. He made a good Facebook post about it with a lot of likes. And he got to the airport on time. So everything went well. All right. <laughs> so they get them in an elevator. But then a delivery man walks in as well. And, you know, they're like, ah, oh, crap. This is going to mess up our plan. But then Creepy Tim locks him in anyways. And uh, then, of course, they have to do a shtick where, like, the delivery man's claustrophobic and he strips because he's so anxious and he pees in there, too. And that's just kind of gross. So it's obviously, like, a disaster. And everybody leaves, like, no love no love sparks there. All right. But they at least know each other now. They've seen each other in a memorable situation. So it wasn't a total loss. The other assistants tell the other boss that, like, the other is interested. They're like, oh, they wanted your number. And then they arrange for them to meet at Yankee Stadium, and they arrange for them to have seats together without them realizing it. Uh, and then they also happen to know the kiss cam person, who they also bribe to get him to, like, putting the kiss cap on them over and over, which I'm pretty sure is not something legally you can do. But rom-coms love to use this kiss cam as a device. But in real life, they just take the seat numbers and we're people who agree to do it. They don't just oh, randomly take it. Oh, wow. What if it was your brother? What? what? Are yeah. you pulling back the curtain on the seat cam? It's true. I mean, what if it was your brother sitting next to you and you're like, that's not kissing my brother. Anyways, evidently all they needed was one kiss cam and then they spend the night together, uh, the bosses do. And then they come back and they're all relaxed. There was no step between those two kiss cam to sleeping together. They just chatted a little bit in the seats had a kiss cam, and bam, it was on. The power of the kiss cam. I mean, the fact mm. they just their pheromones just shot out, and it was on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So life gets better for the assistants. Yeah, so the assistants are super happy. Charlie gets to spend time with his girlfriend. Harper meets a guy. She calls golf guy, and they go on nice dates. And he's got a mustache and a soul patch, so you know this guy can't last. But but you know, <laughs> she seems happy for a while. He also doesn't actually have a name. No, they just call him Golf Guy because she went golfing with him. <laughs> But Charlie and Harper are spending hours together, like, scheming, basically. Yes, they Mm. do so much scheming. What they learn is that their bosses are quite bad at maintaining and growing a relationship. And so they have to basically do everything. So they send flowers, and they send compliments, and they do a lot of of talking about all this. So yeah, they do all these kind of schemes to keep them together. Uh, And then they plan for the bosses to go away on a weekend together so that they can have that weekend free. So he can go to a pool party with his girlfriend, and she can go to an engagement party of her friend. But then 
The bosses have an argument, and Tay Diggs destroys his son's science project that Charlie was supposed to do. Because evidently in the movies, these assistants are supposed to do science projects for his son. <laughs> so then Harper stays and helps Charlie with it. And they have moments late at night where they just talk about their dreams. He's like, I want to be rich and promoted. And she's like, I want to be a sports writer just like Lucy Liu. I want to write the kind of articles that made me cry when I was a kid, which is yeah. a cool thing. She likes sports, which is <laughs> supposed to make her attractive here. But she does point out in the film, she's like... Men don't just like girls who like sports. They want a girl in a tight shirt who just like likes guys who like sports. So I was like, eh, yeah, point. yeah, There's some yeah. thoughtful stuff in there. Yeah, where she seriously likes sports. Yeah, it seems like Charlie's biggest ambition is just to be a guy who makes a lot of money. Yeah, this yeah. guy should not be likable, but he has fun banter with her. He should not be likable. He's a finance dude who just wants to make more money. That is not somebody who I would normally be interested in. Yeah, she sizes him up at the beginning and says, hey. You know, you look like you were... She's like, you're not going to be fired. You're just going to swoop in with your old cross stick and your fraternity connections. And you'll get promoted for no reason. They both are working their butts off and they're both not making much money and they're both kind of poor in it. They don't go out to nice stuff. They only go out to nice things that are free. Yeah, their apartments are realistically tiny and they have roommates and stuff like they that. They both have roommates, yeah. 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 What happens is Tay Dig gets drunk, talks with Charlie, apologizes. And he's like, you're a good guy. And then he goes and apologizes to Lucy Liu for being a jerk. And then they get back together. Uh, so now Charlie and Harper both get to go to their events they were so excited about. But then Harper gets ghosted by the dude she was going to have, has her date to the engagement party. Damn you, golf guy. The golf guy. So he doesn't call her anymore and she's sad. And you can see Charlie's a little concerned. He doesn't want her to be hurt, but he's just trying to tell her it's okay. So... You know, she ends up coming along to his pool party where his girlfriend's kind of a douche to him. Uh, and they do kind of establish that she's really superficial and doesn't seem to care that much about him. So that you don't mind that he's, you know, getting more meaningful relationship with Harper. Uh, mm. And they even point out, he talks with his roommate. And the roommate's like, dude, your girlfriend sucks. Like, what do you guys even <laughs> talk about? He's like, uh, she doesn't like dairy. I know that. You know, like, kind of established <laughs> he's not used to having legit relationships. He's just like, ooh, I have a pretty girl. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That fits in with the finance thing that he's... Yeah. High status things that he thinks yeah. he wants. He's very... Yeah, he's definitely got a lot of douche things about him. But, you know, he got, seems to care about Harper a bit. So his girlfriend ignores him at the pool party. And then he's like, you know, Harper, I'll go with you to the engagement party. So then they go to the uh, engagement party. They have some banter. They do a dance. And, of course, they get some slow dance where they talk. The classic moment where they're like, hey, we're having fun on the dance floor. Whoa, Whoa, it switched to a slow song. I didn't see that one coming. What do we do? Oh, 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 he takes her oh, hand. Oh, oh, they dance and they stare at each other. Oh, way too close because these people would be like, you'd have double vision how close they were looking at each other. But in the movies, <laughs> that's totally in legit normal space to stare at each other. They end up leaving to get pizza. These two love pizza more than anything. They orgasmically love pizza. So they are literally bringing home a pizza box to his place. And they are just like, I want to fuck this pizza. They literally say that. They <laughs> love that was a great this line. pizza. This is going to sound weird. And I wouldn't tell anybody else that. I want to fuck this pizza. Mm. Yeah. It's great. It's great. All right. She's like, I get it. <laughs> this whole thing is actually just like a subversive ad for... New York pizza. Dominoes. It yeah. really made me want some, I gotta say. So they're eating it, and they're just like, oh, my God. And then he looks at her, and you could tell he's realizing. He's like, oh, my God, I feel things. I feel things for her. This is what you mean, Cynthia, by an endorphin sprinkles yes. moment. Yeah, there's some sprinkles. Some sprinkles there. So they're doing a stare. They're doing a little stare, hot stare at each other. And then she's like, oh, I, I should go. She takes her pizza because she needs a lot of pizza because it's delicious. She's like, this is the best meal of my life. And she leaves. They go the next day. And then the bosses turned out that they are engaged and that they want to elope like within a couple weeks. And they're oh, wow. like, I'm okay. going to promote you, Charlie. You're going to get the job you always wanted. Harper, you can now write. I'm going to give you this thing to write. And they're like, oh, my God, like dreams come true. Everything's working out. The end. And then... <laughs> And then Lucy Liu tells Harper, she's like, you know what? I know I'm kind of a bitch to you, but I just, you know, this is a hard business. I want you to be strong. I see you have a lot of potential. You know, like everything's going so good. And then Charlie is going out eating fancy food with his boss and he's so excited. And then the boss is like saying something like, oh, yeah, send flowers to my ex, you know, tell her I'm so excited to bang her tonight. And he's like, what? Yeah. He's like, I thought you were marrying Lucy Liu. And he's like. Oh, yeah, I am. But, you know, having some fun. Charlie's like, oh. And then we're going to stop. And then, stop. You're gonna, then Paul is going to guess what happens next. And what happens the rest next, of the Paul? Film. 
What happens next, Paul? What happens next? Okay, so Lucy Lou finds out that it's not really going to be a good relationship because it's all about the ex-wife. And also maybe finds out that they were originally set up by the assistants. And so she blames Harper for setting her up with this guy who's an asshole. So Lucy Lou and this guy end up not getting together. The guy gets some sort of bad thing happen on to him, gets horse manure dumped on him or something. Uh huh. But the assistants end up together. And maybe even there's like a reverse. Maybe Lucy Lou gets over the fact that Harper set them up. And then maybe there's like a reverse that like Lucy Lou sets Harper up or something. Oh! Ooh, let's oh. see how you did! Oh, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. So what happens is Harper ends up hearing his boss flirting on the phone. So she knows. And she and him are at the jewelry store later picking out the engagement ring. So she realizes that he was flirting. And then she realizes Charlie knew. She's like, but they can't get married. And he's like, yeah, they can. Like, we'll just hide it. And she's like, you're such a douche. And then she's mm. basically like, you're just as bad as him, if not worse. Like, you're choosing to be a douche. And he's like, you're avoiding writing. You're just doing this job. And now you're like, you know, you're not doing what you actually should. And then they have this argument. And then she, you know, she's like, I'm going to tell Lucy Lou everything. So then they storm out. And then it's one of those like, dun dun, big fights. She goes and tells Lucy Lou. She tells her everything. And then Lucy Lou like fires her and storms off. So not surprising, right? She tells Lucy Lou that they set them up. That originally. they set them up, but she still doesn't want to believe that he would like cheat on her. So she's just like, "You're fired," but I'm gonna still get with him. Mm. So then Charlie and Harper they show each other kind of like missing each other a bit. Uh, Harper writes her article. You know, she pursues her writing. He gets his fancy meal with the girlfriend, and you know, gets to be out in a rich place. And then all of a sudden, he realizes like, "Oh, rich stuff doesn't all make you happy." You really need actual substance. So then he leaves both of them. You know, he like breaks up with his girlfriend. And he's like, oh, my God, I have to make it to the airport. And he's like, oh, wait, I actually have four hours. Oh, good. I'll just <laughs> chill and have a hot dog. So <laughs> Does it do that? <laughs> yes, yeah, he I does. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, oh, my God, I was too late. And he runs down. And then he's like, Lucy Lou, do not marry Tay Diggs. He's like, he doesn't know anything about you. And you're better than this. And da, da, da. And then, of course, Tay Diggs doesn't know anything about her because he doesn't care to remember so then she's like, what's my favorite place? What's my favorite that? And he doesn't know any of it. And then he calls her by his ex-wife's name, Burn. So she, yeah, she leaves. So then Charlie quits too. He's like, I quit. The bosses break up. Both Charlie and Harper both quit. Harper finishes her article. Lucy Lou is like, oh my God, like I really actually need you. You're an amazing assistant. I actually, this place is falling apart. And Harper's like, no, you know what? I really got to be a writer. And then Lucy Lou's like, all right, I'll help you. And so it's like, oh, geez. And then, just as you guessed, Lucy Lou told Charlie to wait outside the building to meet her. And then all of a sudden Harper appears because Lucy Lou set them up. Mm. Yep. Good call there, bro. So they're standing out. They look at each other and they're like, oh. And then she's like, you didn't show good character. You were really bad. And he's like, I know. He looks all regretful and he looks all sad. And then she's like, but despite all that, you know, she cares for him. And then they kiss. And then it pans away. Right in that moment when they kiss, I don't know if this happened to you. Out of focus, to the right of them, there's a guy holding an Amazon package who reacts to it <laughs> so dramatically really? that I couldn't take my eyes off him. I did like, not notice that. He was that. like, whoa, He's a, look at that. An extra really making the most of his <laughs> yeah. uh, camera time. <laughs> T. Diggs doesn't really get his comeuppance, though. Oh, he eh? does, actually. You were right. Charlie's roommate throws that whole iced coffee on him. <laughs> nice. So he's just like, oh, you still work for him? And he's like, no. And he goes, bloosh, and just throws his iced coffee. And he's like, it's soy. Enjoy it. Keeps walking in without even looking to see the damage he's done. <laughs> yeah, he just, uh -huh. he just walks in and swoops, throws it on, and he's like, enjoy it. Yeah. So, our segments. Segments. So, the, the next day... We're going to look at what happens right after the film ends. Often these things end on, you know, the big kiss and dramatic music swell or whatever. But you know what? What's going to happen? 
Well, so uh, I think usually in these films, there's kind of a disaster where they're going to get together. And then the next day, they're going to be like, oh, I've only known you like a day. But these mm-hmm. people actually have a legit relationship built up. So they're actually going to have a fairly normal mundane life. They're going to like sleep over, still be broke. He's going to be a temp at this point because he lost his job. She doesn't really have a job, but she's going to try to get articles and they're just going to kind of enjoy each other's company. But yeah. they're just going to be two New Yorkers who are somewhat unemployed, <laughs> but who like our dating. There's no obstacle for them to date, really. They can just start dating. Yeah, they're just mm-hmm. going to like, you know, hook up that night. And so, yeah. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> it's a fairly yeah. undramatic. It is. It's refreshingly undramatic. Uh, maybe the next day they find out they have cancer, like all the other movies we've done. Well, and Nicholas Sparks, like, uh, Charlie would have, like, died in a burning building or something like that. Or, like, there would have been, you know, some type of drowning. And then Harper would be standing wistfully at the mm. corner by herself, staring off, feeling his love. Drowning in the burning building is a tough one. But, yeah. yeah. He'd manage it, Nicholas Sparks. But, yeah, one or both of them would be ghosts if it was. Yes, <laughs> there would be ghosts. <laughs> if they're both ghosts, it's not really a problem. But And it would turn out their bosses were, like, ghosts the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> everybody a ghost everybody's a ghost <laughs> so um no obstacles Let, let's move on to the next segment now the story of us this is where we're going to talk about how likable these people actually are in terms of like would we actually be interested in dating these people okay so hypothetically in this hypothetical i'm a single girl in new york city i meet this hmm. guy at a party he and i flirt he and I are dancing a little bit. He's given me those eyes that are very attractive. And if we do some flow dance. The crinkly smile he's giving you. Crinkly smile, you know. I think we'd have a good fling. I don't see much else because we don't really have much in common. And I'm not into the financial types. And he needs a hoodie. I love me some hoodie. So, yeah, he's he's a fling, like a confident, cocky bit of a dude. So he'd be fun for a very short period. But I don't have anything long term for him. What about just on an abstract level? Are you drawn to her type? Uh, I think she's a nice person. They do make them a little bit more like, well, like minimally manic pixie, a little more disheveled. But on the whole, they both seem like pretty tolerable people to be around. Yeah, which is refreshing. So let's assume that I live in a world where everybody is ridiculously pretty. What are you doing in this world? (laughs) It, I don't understand the question, Paul. You're just a single guy in New York, and you are working as a psychology academic, and you are at a party, and you meet her. Go. Oh, yeah. I'm at Columbia. I've got, like, patches on my coat, and uh, right. I'm a successful professor. We're at a party. Okay, so she's a writer, which I like. I wrote down something that she said, which I think was very writerly. She said that my boss is, like... If Miss Piggy and Voldemort had a baby, and that baby had low blood sugar and hadn't had sex in a year. I found that very attractive about her, and she's enthusiastic. That's something that I like. Like, she could get into things. What's this article that she's writing? She's writing about senior citizens who do their own Olympics. She loves sports, so she's trying to write the article that makes her cry. So that would be a bit tough because I don't like sports at all. Like, I hate sports, so... Yes, so I don't think you guys are going to have a long thing if she wants to do tons of sports and you're not that into it. So we both could have a short fling with these people. To be honest, I kind of fell for her in the pizza part because she was so, so enthusiastic about the pizza and very articulate about it and very, yeah, just passionate about this pizza. And then he was passionate mm. about it too. Like, their enthusiasms matched at that moment. And he was showing off for her, like climbing up the fire escape at the pizza and stuff like that. And even though he was trying so hard to be this um, businessy guy, he had this kind of wild and crazy side. And he had this banter. He had this rapport where he would bust her chops all the time in a way that was genuinely funny and warm and clever. So, yeah, I thought he was pretty attractive to me as well. All right. The next segment is U versus U, and the pronunciation is important there. We're talking whether the various romantic scenes are very nice, ooh, or kind of kind of gross. And in this case, it applies more to the bosses. It's almost like Charlie and Harper are writing a romantic comedy for their bosses and writing the mm. dialogue for it as well. So what do you think, Cynthia, about the things that they do to spark the romance? 
Well, they kind of lie a lot. So, <laughs> like, they write, they literally write the sweet cards in the flowers to the boss. Like, a lot of it is fake. They definitely hang out by themselves a lot, but they definitely fabricate a lot, which is kind of ew. Charlie says to tell Lucy, Lou, I see you. Like, I see you. What did you think about mm. that? I didn't really understand it. I don't know. It sounds like a rom-com line. Yeah. Maybe he was like, say, a rom-com line. And then Tadex comes in and he's like, uh, I, I see you. And she's like, what? And he's like, I, I see you. And yeah. she's like, right what? And bombs. he's like, I see you. And then she's like, <laughs> close the door. <laughs> and <laughs> they have a lot of like office sex. Because Charlie and Harper aren't actually trying to get each other during this, they just have a lot of ooze where, like, you know, more endorphins where they just happen to be in stance, but they're not actually trying to woo each other throughout any of this. Yeah, it's a lovely way to make it happen as though they have this shared project they're working on and they just kind of get to know each other through that and get to know their own cunningness, I guess, and ambition to do nothing. Now we come to the most important part. Yes. Which is the aforementioned endorphin report. How did this movie do for giving you the sprinkles? Oh, man. This was sprinkle fucking tastic. This was great. <laughs> that goes right on the box. I mean, this was just great fucking sprinkles. I mean, I'm doing a little like sprinkle dance right now. I'm just like, oh, yeah, that was nice. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Can you describe the sprinkle dance? Oh, it's just like me just like bumping my shoulders a little bit, being like, woo, sprinkles. So it was just like the movie made me so happy. Like, it was just like, it was funny. So I was getting all this funny and laughing. And then they also had sweet moments with sprinkles, super plus. And there was something keeping them apart. But what it was was perfectly natural and uncontrived, which is dating other people and yeah. keeping their options open kind of thing. Yeah. And they also established so that you don't feel weird about it, that his girlfriend's super superficial and doesn't care about him. So they try to make it that. So it's not as weird. So, moments of super sprinkles. Dancing together, staring at each other. He has a really good stare at her. Yeah. Their banter in general is good spring. They just have good banter, so it's just nice. Eating pizza is the big one where they stare at each other. When he's taunting her like, oh, got to get my pheromones going. She's like, don't say pheromones. He's like, oh, the chemicals in my sweat. Yeah, they just have good banter. So, But then the, the high sprinkle times are dancing, stares, kissing and him basically looking concerned at her occasionally when she's like oh golf guy didn't call me and he's like oh no golf guy didn't call you so i think my favorite moment sprinkle wise was when he's telling her the story about the newts that you got to keep multiple newts. salamanders salamanders you got to keep multiple ones going he's basically trying to tell her she should date more than one person at a time but it's his way of saying you should date me also just the romance of being in new york city and being in a big building um, big empty building after hours, having a drink together, plotting this project. Yeah. All right. So that was uh, set it up. Yeah. Do we have a rating system yet? Do we have a... No, we don't need to rate it. It's just sprinkle fucking tastic. The most sprinkle fucking tastic. Yeah. Even more so than a Christmas prince. More so. I agree. All right. That was the endorphin report uh, for set it up. Thank you very much, Cynthia and Daniel. Thanks, Paul. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And we will talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.